Hey folks, this is Ham the Guinness Gamer here, bringing you my Myth of Empires first impressions review in February 2024. Now, this is a game, first of all, I'll say that I'm generally very, very impressed with. Um, I'll get into the details shortly. Um, I should start with a disclaimer of saying that I didn't actually know much about the game when it was released. It was only released a couple of days ago. Um, and I approached it, therefore, with, with more or less a, a clean slate, with zero expectations. I kind of looked it up briefly, thought, yeah, that looks like I would be up my street. And I, I bought it. Um, since then, as I say, a couple of days ago, I... I've not regretted my decision at all. I actually think it's wonderful. Um, now I'm only, I've played about 8 hours of it so far. Um, but so far it's extremely engaging and fun. And as I say, I'm very impressed with it. One of the first reasons why I'm impressed, one of the first things that hit you is the crafting system. It's probably the most in-depth crafting system I've ever seen in my life. Um, it's incredible. I'm just going to open it up here. And this is one of nine different trees that I'm showing. So these are the nine trees up here. Um, and they have it split up that way just to make it a wee bit easier to navigate around it. But this is the, the workbench and tools part of the crafting tree. And you'll see every single one of these uh, boxes sort of almost laid, up, laid out like a civilization tech tree. Um, all of these are different crafting things that you unlock you know you start off with as i say these are the uh, workbench and tools so you start off the first things are your your basic tools that you would expect in a lot of survival games you know your stone hammer stone axe and you work through then you unlock a sickle you unlock then bone tools and and eventually copper tools and and or bronze tools and ultimately presumably iron tools and obviously i'm i'm very very much not anywhere near through this tree and um, but it's that's just one of many you know if you look at the building tree it's exactly the same you know there's loads in it there's loads in the weapons or even more in the weapons actually when you look at it there um that's quite extensive and honestly, it's so in depth, and I love it. I think I read somewhere they've more than a thousand recipes, and they've plans to um to bring more into it with with DLC, which I love. For me personally, I don't think there can be too many recipes. Now, uh, one thing that you would expect, which is the case, is that you can't unlock them all with all of the points that you actually with the recipe points that you get with leveling up. And as you can see down here, I'm um. Of 61 at the minute i'm not really spending them i'm being very careful what i actually spend them on just in case um we need a bit of planning from our guild's point of view to to spread out what we actually delve into because obviously individually you can't unlock them all so i enjoy that element of the gameplay as well that organization that that'll take with the the people that you're playing with and so as i say like it's huge you go into armor a uh, team and section food and medicine section they all have a decent bit it's just this last one doesn't have a lot in it but for the most part they all uh, they all have a good amount in it um so that's one of the things that i love about it because it's so in-depth crafting wise it's also really really in-depth with skills as well they have similar similar level of complexity to them um i'm not going to go into it too in depth mostly because i don't fully understand it all i'm not going to lie i've only been playing as i say about eight hours but you can see here these skill trees there's five main skills here strength agility physics intelligence and charisma and generally they things they do cover what you would assume they would cover like strength is your your one-handed and your two-handed weapons agility is your bow and it's your horse riding and light armor and um, strength is heavy armor as well physics your general health um as i say a lot in it i don't fully understand it all i won't claim to but generally speaking it's great the amount of content that it has especially when you're approaching it like i have with with zero expectations at all next thing then that is a great bonus for it as well is actually the building system so building systems largely quite similar to the games like valheim and pax Day and and you know we've we've done it a lot but uh we've played this kind of building system a lot but it's not a bad thing because it's a tried and tested method and it works and um, the way things snap together and you place them we've built all of this this is all wooden and was pretty soon we're going to be upgrading that to to clay and ultimately you upgrade to stone and then you upgrade to metal you know similar progression path to, to so many games that we've played even the likes of arc falls into that as well 
building system here i can see it in uh, crafting recipes when we go into uh, building and furniture you know there's the wooden ones to start with wooden foundations wooden you know wooden walls and um, wooden doors and such wooden roofs and then you go to the clay you go to masonry which is stone then you go to metal and obviously each of those have different protections and it'll help protect you against pvp um, and yeah, obviously there's a, a different grinding element with getting them as well and different level requirements are metal foundations level 45 um, so that's another fantastic element of it there's random things as well that I've, I've only seen now for the first time you know tree houses um safes metal gates you know uh storage solutions so this uh wooden building has been built by, from scratch from one of our guild members and then all these fences and everything's put down um and then that's a big proper gate out there and ultimately we'll probably have that full fence around our uh around our um, or that proper gate and proper fence around our whole thing and there's somebody pushing uh, a wheelbarrow because she is out collecting resources using a wheelbarrow I've always thought a wheelbarrow would be a great addition to games like this and I don't think I've ever actually seen it so that's absolutely fantastic the next thing then that is also amazing um, is the combat system the combat system seems like it'll be quite complex um so first of all the melee combat system we have a like a bit of a, an eight point directional combat system so you see those eight points that i'm uh, swinging around there and the, you can attack from those eight points and then you can also block from these eight points so it's quite similar to games like for honor that i've played regarding that that it has a directional and obviously you have to block in the right direction and attack in the right direction to um to actually land a hit so that's going to be fairly challenging i can imagine it'll take a bit of getting used to um, at the minute the pvp is currently limited because the server is new the game's just dropped so there's um there's a reduction in the amount of pvp damage and obviously everybody's just starting out so i haven't had any pvp at all and probably won't for a few days yet um but that seems like that'll be very challenging another thing then the the archery is a wee bit more simple i'll just take my bow out here it's a wee bit more simple Um, you, you just aim and shoot as you would expect um and that works and there's telling me i can't do any damage to the fence now what is wonderful as well is that you can actually shoot and ride a horse so i'm just going to get on to aptly named shadow facts here and show how that works these are just random bits of the game that all add to the enjoyment of it, things that you're not expecting as i say when you're not um when you don't research the game too much before starting to play but you can gallop as much as you want and shoot and i believe also you can attack melee while um yeah while galloping on a horse as well you can that'll be more challenging but i know you can get spears and lances and things like that that'll make a char that'll have a charge bonus to them and your horse also does damage to things when it tramples over them or runs into them so again right now i've I've only really fought animals you know there's been no pvp uh, i haven't really fought any npcs either well to be honest i have and i've died um so there is a challenging element to that but i've fought animals so i haven't fully delved into the combat system mostly i've been shooting them with my bow because i'm finding that a lot easier but that uh that melee combat is going to be a learning curve for sure um, and also the archery is useful it gives you extra damage in headshots as well which uh, obviously you would kind of half expect but it's good when they have little mechanics like that in it next thing then there obviously i'm showing me riding a horse here this horse i've tamed it um you can also breed horses and um, so you can tame and breed them and try and get certain stats into the horses and get better uh, better animals that way that's not just limited to horses um, there's a number of animals I've came across. I believe they're all tameable and all breedable. But ones that stand stand out are the likes of wolves and foxes, and you can you can tame them and you can use them for base defense. So you can create a wee wolf pen in your base, and presumably we well, haven't done it yet, but presumably they'll roam around the base then and attack anybody that is attacking the base. Um, and then there's other animals in it too. There's boars and there's elephants. I see you can get armor and saddles and such for elephants now presumably they will be end game animals um, and they'll be for probably sieging settlements and taking people out but it seems to be quite a quantity of real world animals none of this is is um 
imaginary in any way or magic in any way at least that, that I've came across anyway but there's a whole array of animals then what that brings us on to next then is there's also like a team like system for NPCs um, so for people so you can go and you can recruit NPCs or indeed you can capture them and beat the shit out of them until they you know submit and and, and what are willing to to work for you but essentially what they end up doing you can get them to grind and craft and fight for you um, and you can have a fair few of them i think there's a limit per person but obviously the more people you have are, are for players should i say and um, but the more players you have in your guild then the more npcs you can have and you could technically end up having a full army of them i think i've seen somewhere that the limit's 10 npcs per human player but I have not confirmed that that is actually the case. But that's the kind of numbers you're talking about. One, uh, one other great thing about the game that I've seen here as well is the guild itself. We've created a guild with a few people in it. The guild itself actually has a technology tree too. And tying into what I was saying earlier about the PvP, some of these technologies in here are set up to sort of counteract B uh, PvP almost. So this boundary marker here you set it up and it gives you a set amount of hours per week that you can make your base essentially invulnerable which is fantastic because you could set it up for the the night time when nobody in your guild particularly if you all uh, are from the same part of the world when nobody in your guild is online just to cancel out the chance of offline raiding and things like that there's also then i see here's a guild skill tree as well so that's a guild tech tree there's a guild skill tree i'll just show this as well and i haven't delved into this much either but there's reduced maintenance on weapons from that and then you go the whole way through it and that's that siege and siege and benefits and siege reducing siege maintenance and such this is just really the tip of the iceberg i get the feeling you know when i'm looking through it and, and learning this there is going to be so much more to this game that i haven't came across yet there is, that is very very clear you're never going to come across it all in in eight hours or so um but it is extremely promising i am very happy with it so far i'm very happy with my purchase and this is only just full release has only just happened a couple of days ago the game was i think in early access a couple of years ago and then they had some um legal issues and the game was taken down for a couple of years but it's all been resolved now and it's back up and i am very excited for sinking many many hours into this in the in the future particularly in the near future um one thing i'd, I'd finish by saying um it's impressive for a game like this to bring so many different elements from different games that I would play together and they seem to work well. Now there's some elements that I haven't obviously fully fully engaged with with the likes of the PvP system and from my time in ARK I'd know that, that that's the kind of thing that can make or break a game if it's not done right. But in general I get the feeling that uh, you know it's a game that's bringing together the likes of the building system from Valheim, um, the, the combat, the multi-direction combat from For Honor, as I said earlier. PvP feels a bit like Ark and the breeding uh, feels a bit like Ark. But the important thing about the PvP is there's definitely they're definitely taking actions to try and stop the the chance of you you know the 24 hour fear of of getting wiped at any moment when you're offline you know the offline raiding i know a couple of years ago the game had issues with china uh, chinese uh, servers zergen european servers and a lot of people it's actually probably the only negative thing i actually seen on steam reviews was a few people mentioning that it does seem as if the devs have actively stopped that from happening so the region or the server teleport is it no longer works the same way and the chinese servers then can't just come to the european servers and wipe them out so i think that'll help a lot judging by the trouble that that people seem to have had in the past with that um, and the other game then that i would i would mention that this feels like as well is that the npc control actually feels a bit like medieval dynasty as well if, if you've ever played it and that is quite quite the mix of of several different games several very very different games um but it feels so far that it all comes together wonderfully and there is a heck of a lot of content by the looks of things and i really can't wait to play it more so as i do i will do more content on it because it does seem like there's not that much content out there for this um in general um so maybe i'll try and fill that gap but for now if you like this video Give me a like, give me a subscribe, and you have any comments to make down below. 
you know what to do. But for now, wherever you are, goodbye and good luck.